Hello students, today we will study unit number 4 which is electrical machines. So in this video we are going to understand the construction and the working principle of single phase induction motor. So I hope you are ready with your pen and paper. So without wasting much time, let us start this video. So before starting the construction, first of all, let me say the two basic differences between single phase and three phase induction motor. So first difference is what? That single phase induction motor having very much simple working principle or you can say having very much easy operation. And second difference is what? That in the case of single phase induction motor for the rotor, there are no windings. Why? Because in this case of uh, single phase induction motor, we are using this uh, squirrel cage rotor which have only cylindrical conducting bars. It don't have any windings. So these are the basic two differences. Now we'll start with the construction. So as usual in single phase induction motor also, uh, one basically two parts are there. First one is known as a stator. Stator is the most outermost part which is stationary to which we are supplying the single phase alternating current. Now inside of the stator this type of pole shoes are there. They are known as pole shoes. And uh, uh, that pole shoe is rounded with copper wire. So over here I have mentioned the figure 2 pole shoe I have taken on which winding of copper is present. Okay. Now after that uh, we will talk about the rotor another part that uh, rotor which rotor we are using as I said in squirrel cage uh, rotor. Now that rotor has uh, cylindrical conducting bars and that cylindrical conducting bars are short circuited between two and rings or you can say that cylindrical conducting bars are connected or fixed between two and rings and it has one main shaft. Now whatever rotor is there, that rotor we will insert inside of the stator. So from the front if you will see then that type of assembly you can see over here from the front. Okay. So uh, what we will do that uh, across these two terminals what will supply single phase AC. Okay. So if you will supply the alternating current through this windings. So according to Faraday's law what we have studied that if you will pass a current from the conducting wire so around the conducting wire magnetic field will be produced so similarly over here also it is a wire and from that wire you are supplying alternating current so around this wires which are mounted on pole shoes what's happen that wires will create or that windings will create the magnetic field now that magnetic field which is created by this winding that will be which type of magnetic field so over here I have written it is variable magnetic field now question may arise that why this uh, winding is producing variable magnetic field so simple answer is there that that magnetic field is produced with the help of alternating current and alternating current is which type of current which will uh, which is variable it is changing its magnitude and direction so due to this type of variable current in the winding variable magnetic field is produced okay. now that means that is our rotor that means that rotor is subjected with what is subjected with a variable magnetic field so for that purpose we will take the help of this principle which is the electromagnetic induction which has been given by Faraday so that principle was what that principle is was like that that uh, if a conductor if a conductor is subjected with variable magnetic field if a conductor is subjected with a variable magnetic field at that time inside of the conductor inside of the conductor EMF is induced so that current is induced that means due to this variable magnetic field which is produced by this winding in the rotor what's happened current is induced and according to Faraday's principle what's happened around the rotor what's happened magnetic fields are created that means over here rotor becomes magnet Similarly, whatever poles are there, pole shoes are there, they will also become magnet. So, supposing over here, I will say that that is our north pole and that is our south pole. Now, as time passes, so we know alternating current is changing its direction. So, after some time, you will say that uh, over here, say now north will be converted in south, south will be converted in north. After some time, again, south will be converted in north. 
नॉट इज कन्वर्टेड इन साउथ मीन्स अल्टरनेटिंग करंट इज चेंजिंग इट्स डायरेक्शन सो ड्यू टू दैट वॉट एवर मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इज प्रोड्यूस दैट विल ऑल्सो चेंज इट्स डायरेक्शन नाउ क्वेश्चन में राइज दैट ऑन रोटर on which side you will say that is north pole or you can say south pole so to decide the pole n or s on rotor we will take the help of lenz law lenz law said what that whatever induced magnetic field is there over here magnetic field is induced due to what due to this pole so whatever induced magnetic field is there that will always oppose its cause cause that means due to what magnetic field is produced due to this magnetic field is produced due to s n n magnetic field is produced and according to the lenz law what's happen in the rotor magnetic field is produced in such a way that that magnetic field will oppose its cause as for example if i want to say over here supposing south pole north pole over here rotor now rotor will do what rotor will induced some magnetic field in such a way that it will oppose this what you can say this uh, uh, cause so over here rotor will produce n pole then it will oppose s pole similarly over here rotor will produce s pole then it will oppose that n pole so that is our law, lenz law that means over here n pole is present so on the rotor s pole will be created over here s so it will oppose by creating n pole okay after some time what happen as current is changing its direction so magnetic field will also change its direction so after some time s is there so oppose n n is there s after some time n is there so oppose then n okay that means what between ns 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 what happen attractive force is there that means now our rotor will never going to rotate and if you want to rotate the rotor at that time with the help of your finger you have to apply the starting torque then once you have applied the starting torque then automatically rotor will start to rotate but question may arise that every time should we apply the starting torque with the help of our finger so answer is no so to provide the starting torque different different arrangements are there for that purpose we will understand in the next video but uh, with the help of this diagram we can understand that uh, how initial torque or you can say starting torque is given to the motor so that motor can be rotated automatically okay so over here this type of circuit diagram is there in which these two poles are there and whatever windings are there on this two pole that is known as main winding okay that is known as main winding that is our main winding okay after that another two poles i have taken on that whatever winding is there that winding is known as starting winding okay so main winding and starting winding okay now starting winding is used for what purpose to provide the initial torque or to start the rotor now how initially rotor will be started that we'll try to understand okay when you supply the ac at that time suppose this pole become north and uh, over here that point is connected with that starting winding so that will also become n okay so if that become n so it will be s and if it will be s it will be s so that wire is connected with that winding starting winding so it would be also s okay now from the diagram we can see that uh, initially what's happen n pole s pole n pole n pole s pole so over here south north it will oppose the cause initially now what we can say that uh, whatever n pole of the shoe is there that n pole of the shoe will do what it will apply the attractive magnetic force on s pole so that s pole is attracted towards the north pole and similarly whatever s pole is there that s pole will do what it will attract the n pole of the rotor towards it like this so that now initial torque is given so now automatically our motor will start to rotate so this is all about the working construction and working principle of that single phase induction motor so is video mein itna hi so till then read hard work hard thank you very much